and it's uh, what a blessing to be here. You know, if you see what my life looked like six years ago, um, it's, it's almost uh, mind boggling. Um, you know, it's uh, I can't tell you how grateful and thankful we are. So, thank you. Yeah. If uh, you're uh, working with kids at all in Classic County, you know we probably have at least a third of our uh, student population, if not higher, who live below the poverty line. And so um, we certainly want um, that never to be a, be a barrier. So the, uh, the project that we brought to you last time is one of the essential parts of our program is our waterfront program where we teach kids swimming and they get to also just splash around. If they're not ready for that. Um, fishing and boating. And we have both canoes and kayaks. And um, those docks are very old, like 50 years old. And uh, they, we have helped them get together with duct tape and bailing wire and lots of love for as long as possible. And now we're at the point where we need full replacement. And our goal was to start this year with the boat dock. It was in the worst condition. And so it took us a while to locate someone who is willing and able to do that. Um, however, like a lot of construction projects, it's next, it'll be next year before it's um, ready to go. Um, so they'll probably start in about March for that dock. We have reinforced the current docks by adding some more flotation, taking the, um, the boathouse, um, which maybe we'll see future if not. It's, it's a nice little boathouse and um, really just holds the oars and the PFDs and we're moving that up on the bank. And then we're changing our um, people management system. Instead of you know having 10 kids on the dock lined up to get into canoes, we'll take two or three or four kids out at a time so that um, it, it might be able to hold 10 still, but we're being very cautious to make sure you know safety is with, with uh, children is, is really obviously our top priority. Um, so we did have the, the organization that's going to build our dock called Easy Dock come out and do an assessment. And we were not surprised by their estimate for the one dock, which was fifty to $60,000. Um, and so the, with the money with Camp Kwan Long and with another major fundraiser that we're in process of right now, which is we're having summer camp for the weekend for returning um, counselors that used to go there and they're having you know it's it's going to be a weekend party basically but they're paying, quite a, they're paying quite a bit of money to do that and between those two things we are already about one third of the way to our goal because as it turns out it's not really a fifty thousand dollar need now that all the docks were inspected and we really had two in critical condition and so the dock company recommended that instead of doing two docks in two separate years that we build a U-shaped double dock, which would be closer to eighty to $90,000 and would be a great savings for us rather than doing the docks one at a time. So um, we have on our plate still raising um, a good $50,000, $60,000 to carry that off. But um, you know, certainly the contribution from this group was the seed money that gave us the confidence to say, you know, we really can carry this off. and. Um, so that's exciting, and we're reaching out to, again, some other organizations. We're writing a grant um, to the Oregon Community Foundation, and uh, we have a board member um, for, that, for that foundation um, here in Classic County, Dan Gaffney, who many of you probably know, and so it's nice to be able to work side by side with Dan, who is kind of a magic worker, and those of you who know Dan are kind of shaking their heads. So here's our boat dock, and what you see here is this white is that the last time it was given flotation devices, it was, in, and this was quite a few years ago, encapsulated styrofoam that actually had a wrap around it. Oh and it was very effective, and it didn't break down until all of a sudden, one day it broke down. <laughs> now, I want you to know that we went out in mass with nets and um, in the canoes and scooped up the styrofoam and had these removed and um, have, again, a temporary um, solution. So that's the first slide. Oh. And, oh. Yeah. It, forgive me, it didn't end up in slides. So that's okay. I have the mic um, And just as an aside, um, as you were, some of us were fiddling with our phones trying to get to be able to vote. Um, electronics are completely forbidden at Camp Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! 
and I have two teenage grandsons, the, the, the older one, which is going to be a counselor this year, and um, it's like ripping his heart out. <laughs> and yet, when Camp Wan Long comes, they say, phones, please, give it, let us, we're going to watch you, give it to your parents. He hands it over and never looks back. And, um, you know, there was reference to the challenges of mental health, you know, to get kids unglued from their technology is probably one of the most significant things that I think we do. Um, so here's the UDoc, and it's called Easy Doc. It's kind of like Legos, and uh, we are going with this, it's like Trex material, and uh, we are going with a doc like this because it has more like a 100-year lifestyle, uh, or lifespan, and, um, uh, and we have other things to get done, you know, like new, fixed cabins and a new infirmary. So, um, we're, again, we're always kind of a work in progress. So, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. And um, and you will be serving um, hundreds of kids in Clatsop County through your generous donation. <laughs>
and educators. And then our older students, so our high schoolers and middle schoolers, will be given mentorship opportunities for the elementary school students. Uh, so this helps them develop a sense of purpose and that social confidence. All of our um, instructors and organizers have backgrounds in um, comprehensive art education, uh, English language development, special education, Montessori instruction, and trauma-informed care. And this really um, informs our dedication to making meaningful art education accessible to all. We continue to emphasize that the program will be uh, offered at no cost to students or their families because we know that the biggest barrier to programs like this um, in our county are financial. Um, being a fairly young organization, we don't have a lot of private donors or large funders yet. Um, we're just a small but mighty group of women who saw this need in the community and decided to take action. Our current budget sustains three part-time paid instructors, but none of the programs currently running would be possible without the incredible amount of volunteer hours given to us by local teachers, parents, artists, um, everyone that cares deeply about the development of the young people in our community. Uh, the majority of the funding we do have right now comes from the board member contributions, local small businesses, and then individual donors. We have built relationships with funders like the Collins and Miller Foundation, OCF, uh, and we are encouraged to pursue their grant programs once we are, we've been active for three years, but right now we don't meet that eligibility requirement. We're so close. Uh, in the meantime, we're still working really hard to make sure that kids in Clatsop County don't fall through the cracks, and this is why we need your help now. <laughs> so we recently received our first big grant award, uh, which will fully fund the first 10 weeks of the after school program that we're starting up. However, the school year is 40 weeks, and we would love to be able to offer this program for the full academic year. So funding support from you all would help us provide 30 weeks of after school programming um, with things like paying for art supplies, instructional materials, payroll for three more qualified instructors, um, and also gives us the opportunity to compensate guest artists and build relationships with organizations like uh, Consejo Hispano, uh, the Chinook and Class of Indian Nations, and other folks who would help us further strengthen our development and equity and inclusion. Uh, most importantly, oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. no. Thanks, everybody. most importantly, you don't get to know. <laughs> Use our two minutes. That will teach you to save the most important for last, uh, right? Oh my God. <laughs> um, uh, you have a couple minutes for questions. Yes. So my question is, what is most important? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you this support will allow us to ensure sustainable um, and consistent art education, right? Because that's the big thing is, is teachers right now are not providing consistent art education. It's all up to the passion of the individual elementary school teacher. So, yeah. Yes. What is the cost of 10 weeks? So 10 weeks right now, we've got um, just over $9,000 um, figured out. And so we're kind of factoring in the money from you. <laughs> yes. And which school districts are you in? Uh, so right now, just a store. Well, we've no, we've all no. of Clatsop County, but we're based in Astoria. So we've been working with. There's a couple of different groups that do uh, busing systems, so that we can have kids bust in if they're in Warrenton Seaside to so, get to Astoria. But not Napa. Not Napa. Oh, not Napa right now. No. Um, so our our art camps are offered to everyone, right? And so anybody has the ability to sign up. But yeah, distance is definitely. They were, they were already full by the time they announced it. Yeah. The camps. Yeah. We definitely still have room in all three. Okay, I'll look again. Yeah, so yeah, we've got five players in the back. Yeah. What's the youngest that you can participate in the camps? Five years old, so going into kindergarten. My grandson's in one camps. Awesome. <laughs> so many questions. Yeah. What's the location for the after school program? To be determined. So this is, yeah, thank you for asking. But in Astoria, though, hopefully one of the schools. Yeah, we're talking to multiple elementary schools. Is the after school program once a week or? So right now, as the budget holds, it's going to be offered for two days a week, and we're hoping to kind of build that up. But right now, it's all about the time commitment for full-time teachers. All of the instructors are work full-time jobs right now. So, was there another question? Oh, one, one more question. One more, same question. Carolyn, did you have a question? Yes. Yes. So, uh, have you guys ever thought about doing a, like, a podcast at all? 
Uh, yeah, that's been kind of suggested. I think once we're more well established and in schools and um, able to consistently see students, we would love to do things like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Harriet Balmer, and I am president of the Tenor Guitar Foundation. Uh, that's pretty unusual because I can't carry a tune even in a bucket. But my husband was the one that got me into this. He plays tenor guitar, and some of you may remember the Kingston Trio and Nick Reynolds and his tenor guitar. That's how we got started in it. And so he's played it for over 60 years. We have an annual event, and it's coming up not this weekend, not Memorial Weekend, but the following weekend, and it will go, go uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we, this will be our 13th event, um, if we count a couple of online ones that we did during COVID. So it's been uh, here, it's an, it's an Astoria project, and it's really got a wonderful history. Mark Joseph started it, and he was a tenor guitar player, and suddenly realized that there was no connection with other four-string instrument players. So he decided he started an online registry, and then it developed into the Tenor Guitar Foundation and the Tenor Guitar Gathering. Uh, he started probably working on it about 2006, before the first event in 2010. Uh, this year, we will, we're expecting about 100 to 150 people attending. Um, it's not just tenor guitars. It includes ukuleles, it includes banjos, it includes fiddles, dobros, and I'm, yeah. mandolins. What else am I forgetting? And some of you may know Alan Amata, who's at the Sunday Market every year with the cigar box uh, instruments. He's been very involved in it from the beginning. Um, this year we're doing something that's pretty exciting, is that we're honoring a high school student who has shown promise in music. And we have had wonderful support from the Nanyu manufacturers. And this high school student is going to be presented a tenor guitar, and somebody in town has offered to give him lessons. So we're calling it our Rising Star Program, and we would like to, we have the support from the manufacturers, so we would like to get that project uh, more developed than we can. So if any of you have any ideas on that, please let us know. Uh, we will have workshops on um, Friday and Saturday. It always starts Friday morning with a trolley ride and all the people come and they cram the trolley and they go up and down singing songs and it is really fun. We did it when our grandkids were three and now they're in college so you know how things change. But it's been a, a great event and people do come back and that trolley ride is one of the, the highlights of it. Um, on um, Friday and Saturday night both we will have concerts there will be different performers um, each evening, so you'll want to come to both concerts. There's just no question about it. And we also have wonderful raffle prizes, and so you, um, including we have, I believe it's seven guitars that have been given to us by these manufacturers, international manufacturers. So that's, that's incredible support for any group. Um, you will find flyers. I'm kind of proud of the sea lion that plays tenor guitar. And we have quite a number of flyers over there, so if any of you have places where you could put them up, um, that would be wonderful. Pick one up. Oh, thank you, Vanna White. I appreciate that. <laughs> and there are also our brochures over there that will give you some more background and some information on it. Um, on uh, Sunday, the tenor guitar orchestra will be playing at the Sunday market, and this is a first. And they have been practicing since last year's event. And we have a number of different people who have come in from town and been practicing. Uh, Marianne is one of them. She's also a vocalist and plays the ukulele and tenor guitar. And tenor guitar. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to do, introduce Deborah Hazlitt, who's our treasurer and uh, the local person. I'm actually from Tacoma. So Okay, jam sessions, right. On, on both Friday and Saturday, we have jam sessions. All of our events are held at the Charlene Larson Center for Performing Arts, and that's been a wonderful location for us. And on the main stage during the day, we have jam sessions. And some of these 
national, internationally famous performers will come and sit in on the jam session. So you have players from very beginning to extremely experienced, some Grammy award winning ones. We have Nashville artists who played with different groups and just a wonderful combination. And we have some who come back every year and then every year we introduce new ones. And so it's a great mix and just magic happens. There's no question about it. Um, it's a great event. We really appreciate the opportunity to tell you about it. Uh, we appreciate the support we've had from the community and we want to keep it in our story. We always have people say, oh, but you're so far from the Portland airport. You know, but once they get to our story, they begin to understand why. And we want to keep that. We love the magic of the city and we want to come back many, many more years. And what an incredible, powerful group of people in this room. Um, it's, it, as we all know, there are unique challenges to being a women-led organization, and the shared experience in this room is pretty incredible. Uh, I'm Jennifer Crockett. I'm the executive director of the Liberty Theater, joined by Rachel Shack, our development manager, and Hillary Adams, our program director for Kids Make Theater, the newest program at the theater. It, I need to also acknowledge it is hard to come up against two other arts organizations. We very much feel like it's a community of art in Astoria and in Clatsop County. It, can, it creates a vibrant, uh, you know, thriving community. Um, I really encourage you. Man, I love Art Camp. They are such a great program. And it is so hard to start something from scratch and as they mentioned, they don't have the relationships with foundations yet that somebody like the Liberty Theater does. So what I'm hoping today is, um, and I might be surprising my cohorts up here, but uh, I, am, I am most grateful for the opportunity to have 100 plus sets of ears to just learn about our program. If you have any young people in your life, send them our way. And uh, we have a great program that we'll tell you about, but, um, I really encourage you to weigh the need in the room. And so, having said that, <laughs> our program, uh, so it started with an angel gift. We had a new board member coming on two years ago that said, Jennifer, if I were to give you $100,000, what would you do with it? And so, we approached it like a grant. We had a big staff meeting. All of us unanimously said, man, we've always wanted to start a children's theater at the Liberty. How cool would that be? but we've never had the money to do it. And so uh, we started this program. We did a national search for a program director. It was totally DEI approved. It was blind search until we met at the very end. Hillary Adams has a ton of children's theater experience and educational experience. And then we set out to do research and development. We built a robust program that meets the needs of our rural community we work with our schools and we work with other arts organizations that are you know, providing similar things to make sure that we're not stomping over their program, but rather supporting it. Um, and we just launched in April. We we're so excited. We have just over 90 kids now. Um, we have a variety of classes. This first slate went down to age five. We're going down to age three and a half this fall. Yeah, like littles, like, you know, doing Shakespeare. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's very, yeah, it's very, we meet them at their level. Uh, this summer, we have a, a really great slate of camps. We've got superhero camp, we've got fairy camp, zombie camp, uh, magic camp. It's kind of like whatever box your young person fits into, we've got something for them. Uh, we also, we offer scholarships and we offer tuition assistance and sibling discounts thanks to the donors that have been supporting us and thanks to the Oregon Cultural Trust. Uh, removing barriers to the arts is central to our mission at the theater. Uh, if you can't pay, please come. We can help with that. We also offer our materials are in Spanish uh, to reach out to marginalized communities that may not have the same access. Uh, we. Um, our students learn both on stage and off stage skills. 
uh, which is pretty cool. You can take acting classes, you can take costuming, and you can take makeup. You also get to learn. We're building uh, this idea that Hillary had that like immediately we were all like, oh my gosh, we have to do this. It's called the Liberty Lab, and it is a black box theater in the Liberty Theater upstairs that's kid-sized, fully ADA accessible. They can play with lighting and sound, and so they're learning technical skills that they can take on to college. We're working on some internship things and college credits and get job skills. Wouldn't it be awesome if we grow these kids in our community and they don't have to leave when they grow up? You can stay in Clatsop County and have a, a job. Uh, sorry, I've gone way longer than I should have. So uh, I'm gonna pass this off to Hillary and Rachel to talk about some testimonials from students. So I'm just going to read a couple of testimonials from Mother's Spring Session. And the second I'm going to have is, uh, we're thrilled that the Liberty has brought Kids Make Theater to life here in Astoria. It is a wonderful opportunity for our kids to learn all aspects of theater from acting to costuming, stage design, and production. Our daughter is absolutely loving KMT. I say thank you and what a joy it is. I'm so privileged to be here. I'm new to this community. And every day those kids are just coming in and I am so honored to be here. 